All right, guys, so I've been working on a Golang project, which is an API, a REST API, and I want to share with you the solutions I've come up with for the problem I have, my thought process, and all of that. And basically, the problem is that I have an expensive endpoint, this one here, which gets the user feed and all of that. I have added pagination and all of that. But still, I want to prevent users of making too many requests in the future. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you the solutions and the thought process I have come up with, explain to you the different kinds of rate limiters that are, or at least some of them, what companies are using, and maybe give you some inspiration for your backend projects as well. So basically, the reason we might want to rate limit our endpoints, it's at least for my use case, there's two scenarios. And the first one is a malicious users, for example. Here we have a user which has a script and he basically can just send a bunch of requests to my endpoints, which is going to exhaust the server resources. And then it's going to also increase my server, uh, my cloud service bill, if you know what I mean. So this is going to make so that legitimate users are actually going to get their requests slower because the server is exhausted. And then I'm going to also have increased cloud service bills for no reason. And secondly, my other use case is that I want to prevent in-house front-end clients. For example, I'm going to have a web browser or even a mobile application or even a third-party integration with another company. And I want to make sure that these guys here, they don't make by mistake or by purpose attack our server with too many requests. One of the reasons I have the front ends here is that the front end team might be using React or something like that. And if you're familiar with it, you know that use effects can cause infinite loops and this can cause an intentional attack, right? So I also want to prevent that and make our servers more resilient. But yeah, basically this is a, a layer of protection that every production API, either public or private, should have in my opinion. And this is the kind of protections that will help you sleep better at night so you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night from a DDoS attack, right? And layer 7 DDoS attacks are actually pretty common nowadays. Anyone with a random script can actually do this. So I think it's wise to implement strategies that mitigate these kinds of issues. So before you write any code whatsoever, I just wanted to show you to make sure if you're not familiar with how rate limiter works, let's go back to the basics and explore how we can actually solve this uh, creatively. Okay, so let's consider the case that we have a malicious user making a bunch of requests to our API. We have already seen that this can cause spikes in usage and server resources. So what ways could we actually prevent this from happening? Because if you think about it, if we have a legitimate user consuming our application, so he's going to make a request, for example, he wants to get the user's feeds. And if this user is making an attack and the server resources have spiked, then this request is going to be delayed. So he's going to get a worse experience in his application. So we want to prevent these kinds of issues. Of course, in this case, we could scale and we could scale again and we could infinite scale. And you can see how this is going to increase your bill at the end of the month. So this is not a legitimate reason to scale. And in this case, we're going to think about having only one server, because if we have multiple servers, then the algorithms to rate limit is going to be a little bit different. Because if you think about it real quick, I'm going to get to this in a bit later. But if this user makes a request and this server is exhausted, basically you're going to have a, some sort of load balancer in between so the user is not going to make a request directly to the server instead it's going to make to the load balancer and then the load balancer is going to select the most appropriate server so if we rate limit one server and the in memory so basically we're going to have an in memory uh, storage of the rate limit requests then this object is not going to be on this server so if you can start to think about the problem here is that this server might rate limit this user, but this server is not, also, is not rate limiting the same request that this user is making. So for this case, we need to unify some sort of, of a cache instead of having a rate limit in each, each server. We could rate limit, for example, here on the gateway or the load balancer, or for example, to have an outside storage like this, where we can have a unified place to store all of the user requests and their count, for example. And this is usually how it works. There's a lot more specificities to this, 
We could also have, for example, alerting when we have the, uh, we can identify that the DDoS attack is happening or a server resource has spikes. Any of those is a good measurement as well, but it will not fix the issue altogether. So having alerting is just one piece of the puzzle, of course. But all right, let's go back to the idea that we only have one server as of now, because this is going to be the most simple case. And I just want to go back to basics to show you how this works. And then we can scale this out, of course. So the idea is that a user makes a request and we're going to have some sort of flyer in between. This could be like a gateway. This is going to act as the rate limits. And don't think that this is going to be a new service or a new server. It could be this is just a new piece of the puzzle. It could even be inside of the server. As I'm going to show in my code, I'm implementing this on the API uh, layer directly. So basically what this means is that whenever someone makes a request, we need a way to identify them. And usually there's two ways you can do this. You can either, either identify them by their user ID, so the application user ID, or better in my opinion is to use their IP address. If you don't identify a user, what happens is that if this malicious user spams the hell out of the server, how do we notify the malicious user from the actual legit user? So we need to rate limit this guy, but if we, for example, if we rate limits and this user gets a 229, basically the status codes to for too many requests, then this user is also going to get that code. And this is not fair. And we want to identify the user that gets rate limits from the other that is not getting rate limits. So the best way to do this is to identify them by IP. And it could start already thinking about how this is going to work because this is going to be a fast access uh, memory. We need to make this fast because if the rate limit is slow, then the overall request is going to get slow. So the best way to implement this could be some sort of fast access cache. If you go back to basics, you could even think about making a map or an object. So each key is going to be the user IP. And then you could also map this to, for example, a slice or an array of requests, accounts, anything like this. Now, this depends on the algorithm you're going to implement. But the general gist of a rate limit is this, is that you have a map with an IP that maps to the user count or request or anything like that. And with this in mind, we can actually start thinking about the future algorithms and how we can actually implement this and what the industry uses, because this is pretty much what you're going to see out there. Now, just before I show you the algorithms, let me just preface again, as I have said that this is thinking about only one server, because the time that you have multiple servers, this is not going to work so well, because I mean, the idea is going to work this here, oh, what I'm doing. This here is going to work, but you need to put this somewhere out there, like a distributed cache, like Redis or something like that with fast access, because as you have seen, this server is not the only one if you have a distributed system, right? So let me show you the first algorithm that I have considered. The first one is the fixed window algorithm. Basically, requests are limited per time frame. Basically, here we have, for example, 2000 requests per hour or for example, 100 requests per minute. What this means is that if you make 100 requests in one minute, then you're going to be rate limited and you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can actually exhaust this quota again. So if you make 50 requests in one minute, after one minute passes, you're going to have the, your quota resetted. And this is very easy to implement, as I'm going to show you. And it works quite well for apps where you need to specify quotas for each endpoint. For example, based on pricing packages. And I'm going to show you a real production uh, business that actually does this. And the bed is basically has the available quota resets. They are subject to spikes at the end of the window. Basically, what this means is that if you make 2000 requests per hour, you could make all of those 2000 requests near the last one minute of that hour. And when the quota resets at the one hour time frame, you can make again all of those requests, thus making double of the requests. So if this is a bit hard to wrap your hand your head about, basically the way that this works is each hour the quota is going to be resetted. So your amount of requests. If you wait until the last hour before the quota resets, and you make all of those requests in a spike. So first, this is the first issue. You can spike requests, so you can make bursts of requests. And secondly, 
After that minute passes, you can make again 2000 requests and so you can spike the API a lot because the window resets after X amount of time as we have seen and this is an error here. And these are implementations in Go that you can take a look. For example, this is one project that implements this algorithm. I'm going to leave these links in the description in case you want to check them out. And this is the another one. And this is the company I was telling you about that uses this. Now, another use case that I was actually using recently, which is OpenAPI with their Sharp GPT, the, their new version 4.0. So if you've been using the free version of Sharp GPT, basically they have announced their new uh, model, which is more advanced. But basically they delivered this into a free tier with a trial you have x amount of requests per day to make using this advanced model after that you can use the basic version uh, the basic model so they probably implement something like this uh, in their use case now the sliding window algorithm is a little bit more complex but it adds a benefit which it fixes basically the issue of the bursts from the previous solution so in this algorithm along with the benefits of the fixed window it adds a rolling window of time that smooths out requests based on the weighted count. Basically, if you are familiar with this algorithm, the sliding window, this is basically that on top of that old, the, the fixed window. And this algorithm here is more efficient in terms of memory and avoids bursts of requests, which fixes that problem that we had. Because this uses a moving window to count requests over the last n seconds at any given point. So unlike the fixed window timer, which resets at any fixed amount of time, and then you get a new quota. In this case, there's no abrupt reset. Instead, old requests slide out of the window and new ones get uh, added as time progresses. The pro this fixes basically the problem where an attacker times his requests at the end of the reset because the window is always sliding and there is no hard reset. And this is an implementation in Go using the sliding window. So if you want to take a look and study this better, you can check this out, it's pretty good. And then these two last algorithms are pretty similar, which is the token buckets. And the idea here on these two algorithms that I'm going to show the next one is that they have a bucket and tokens. So basically there's this idea, this metaphor of a bucket where you put tokens or you take tokens out. And in this case, it maintains a fixed capacity bucket where tokens are added at a fixed rate. So one token added per second and Initially, this starts full and it's refilled at a rate of R tokens per second. And basically, each incoming request requires a token. So you can think about a request has a token. And if a token is available in a bucket, then the request is processed. Otherwise, the, the request is denied, right? Now, a package that uses this is the official Golang time rate limit. So this is, you could say, the official package to rate limit. It's not built into the standard package because you need to also install it. But this is a very small package that implements the token-based um, rate limiter. So as you can see, and it has a pretty similar explanation to what I have talked about. Now, the last algorithm that I want to talk about is the leaky bucket algorithm. This is very similar to the previous one because unlike this, this is rate limited by the amount of tokens that can drip out of the bucket. So instead of being empty, this is what drips out or leaks. And this is normally used to rate limit requests to load balancers or disk operations. And who uses this? It's, for example, this Go Uber package, so from Uber. Now, let's get back here to VS Code. And I just want to show you, if you, in case you are interested, how I'm using this in my application. Basically, this is still in its early days, but the idea is that we have like a user feed where the user can make posts. This is the query. And... This query is going to grow a lot more as I add the entities needed. But basically, as of now, it's fetching all of these users that the user, it basically fetches all of the users that this user follows, their posts, and then it just aggregates them into one uh, query. But this is not the, the main idea of, of this video. Basically, I just wanted to show you that this is one of the requests that I want to uh, rate limit a lot. And the way I'm doing this is that I have here on my main.go, I'm creating an instance of a rate limit, which then I pass into the application. And basically, this application uh, receives a rate limits interface. This is an interface that I have made, which uh, any rate limits that I implement has to have this method. And this is the common thing that they have is this method one. They receive an IP 
and they return a boolean in case the user has access or not in case the user has been raised limits and then i send a time duration to set the header for example here on the middleware i have if in case, this is how i consume it basically uh, if this ip is not allowed then i draw an error and i set this header to the to the consumer to say how many how much time that this user has to wait until he can make another request after he has been rate limited so this is pretty important to do for third party consumers so that they can consume your api and do rate limits imagine a use case where you have a, a third party application which is consuming your public api and they are doing a batch absurd of many users and this is going to get rate limited at some point of time if you're doing a lot of users and that script or that migration or whatever that is absurding the users it wants to consume the retry after otherwise there is no way to consume these endpoints without getting rate limited and waiting for a period amount of time right so this is pretty important for public apis then again this is the middleware i'm going to show you in a bit but not right now so yeah we sent a rate limiter implementation and in this case i'm going to send the fixed window rel limiter because here on my internal package, I have a bunch of them. This is, of course, for uh, learning purposes. But here is implementation of the fixed limiter. Uh, you could take a look at those links that I have on the description. Uh, they are a bit more complex than mine. But if you want to copy along, here it is the fixed window. It's pretty simple. And this is also concurrent safe in terms that I'm locking the map access. Here I have the clients, which is basically uh, that map I showed you at the beginning of the video, which you have an IP and then account of requests, for example. Right now, the sliding window, this is it. It's a little bit more complex. And finally, here is the token based or the token buckets implementation. And basically, this is a wrapper around the Golang package I'm, I'm consuming. So this is the implementation and it's pretty simple as well now let's go back to the application and how i'm doing this so here i run the server and here i have a bunch of middlewares which one of them is going to be my rate limit so the one that we set it on the application and if we take a look at it and here basically i have configuration to set the rate limiter um, by configuration by dot env or something like that so this is what i do if it's enabled then i run it otherwise i just allow it directly and here I get the user IP, the real IP, and I'm getting the real IP from the... Basically, I'm using Qi for this one, and I can get their uh, middleware to get the real IP. So that's pretty, pretty handy. And then here I just consume the rate limiter, which just allows or not. And then I, as I've shown you guys, I rate limit exceeds response in case it gets there. And finally, I just want to make one honorable mention, which is their official Gucci HTTP rate limit. This is probably what I'm going to end up using, but before using this package, I wanted to understand and teach you guys as well how this works or how Rate Limiter works so you can implement it yourself if you need to. But most probably I'm going to implement this package here, which as you can see, it adds uh, an implementation of a sliding window. I think they say somewhere right here. So I want to implement this sliding window and this is inspired by the Cloudflare uh, article here. And basically we can limit by IP. Here we can set the requests and then the time frame. And one of the cool things that I want to, to consume from their package is that you can rate limits by endpoint. For example, here you can set arbitrary keys and here you can set the URL path, for example. Um, so this is what I want to use. And I just wanted to show you guys that you can also use just a package instead of implementing your own rate limiter, right? So I hope you guys liked the video and learned something new. If you guys are interested in leveling up as a software engineer i have left in my description the first link in the description is the self-made engineer community where i'm going to teach all about this course here so this is going to be in the future to come so stay tuned for that and i see you on the next one